Welcome to Northwest Fencing Center's fencing series on Zoo on YouTube. This is Coach Michael McTeague, and today we're going to talk about how to prepare for taking Zoom classes. Whether you're at Northwest Fencing Center or somewhere else, you're probably doing some sort of live Zoom class with your uh, with your teammates and your coaches. <clears throat> There's a few things you can do to make your class go a little bit more smoother, make it easier on the teacher and your friends and get more out of it yourself. The first thing to remember, even though you're alone, you've got a computer in front of you and it doesn't seem like it, you are in a classroom and you need to act like it. You don't want to be talking over other people. You don't want to be talking over your coach. You don't want to be walking in and out of the frame and doing other things and texting on your phone or anything else that you'd likely get in trouble for if you were doing it in the middle of an actual class because you are in the middle of an actual class. So act like it. Mute your video just so that the sound of your feet and banging around and stuff like that isn't echoing around in everybody's head along with all of their noise as well. You'll hear the classroom better, you'll hear your structure better, um, and it's just way more polite. One of the little hints in Zoom is if you do need to say something, you can walk up to your computer and just press the space bar and use it like a button on a microphone, press to talk. It's a real easy way to do it. Now, Next thing in order to prepare is you need to decide where you're going to do this and you need to have enough room to do the footwork or target practice that you're going to be doing. And the area needs to be clear. You don't wanna be tripping over your books, stepping on your cell phone, um, poking inadvertently someone in the eye who really shouldn't be in the area. You don't wanna be tripping over your dog. So make sure the area is clean, that it's safe, that if you take three retreats, you don't fall down a flight of stairs so that there's enough room and make sure the area is as quiet as will be allowed. You don't want to have your uh, brothers and sisters wrestling in the background and you can't hear the instructor. So keep it chill and act like you're in a real classroom. The next thing is the instructor is going to want to see you. So you want to frame your video so that the instructor can see all of you and preferably the target if you can. The first thing is to set your video up so that when you are in frame, your coach is looking at you from the side, not dead on, unless they ask for it. If they ask for it, that's easy to do. But most of the time, the first time you're practicing footwork and stuff, they're going to want to see you from the side. If you're practicing target work, they're going to want to see you from the side and be able to correct your technique. Now, when you set up this view from the side, you wanna be able to see all of you and you are the most important thing. It's nice that if they're able to see the target as well. I've got a really lovely setup here at the club where you can see all of me and you can see the target, whether I hit it or whether I don't, but you can see everything. That's nice. But if I were in a smaller area or my camera had to be closer to me because of the width of the area I'm in, it'd be more important to see me than to see the target. So we want to have you in the frame, not necessarily the target. Primarily, we want to get all of you. It's not useful to practice footwork. And this is what they're seeing for obvious reasons. You want to see your feet. Now, what you also want to do is test this out before class. Don't be there mucking with your camera and missing half of the warm up because you're trying to get yourself in there. Um, or simply not test it, not pay attention, and wind up with uh, your coach not able to see you and not able to give you feedback, and you don't wind up getting out of the class what you took the class for. Now, there's one more skill that's really useful. Some of you probably already know how to do this because there's been a lot of Zoom stuff happening for you on all fronts. 
But what you want to be able to do is pin your video. What this means is, is you're going to change the view on your monitor screen and only on your monitor screen so that you can see yourself. And now you can use that as a mirror. The coach or the instructor can pin their video over the top of that at any time. They don't need your help with that. So that all of a sudden, maybe, boom, they're the big view and they're demonstrating something. And then they unpin their video and bang, you've got your view and you can see yourself. And you can see if you're actually doing what you think you're doing. Now, pinning's pretty easy. You're going to go up there on your screen and you're going to find yourself, right? And when you find yourself, uh, you're going to mouse over that and you'll get three little dots. Or you can simply right click on yourself and you're going to get some selections of things you can do, including pinning and unpinning your video. So if your instructor asks you to pin your video so that you can see what you're doing, that's how you do it. Mouse over, find the three dots or right click, select pin. When you want to get back to a normal view, exactly the same thing, except you select unpin. Pretty simple, pretty easy to do, very, very useful. Because you can now, now you've got a mirror that you can see what you're actually doing. At. And if you're on guard and, and your coach says you need to get lower, you can say, I am lower. And he'll say, no, I want you lower than that. You can get lower. You're on guard and he says, bend your knees. You say, oh, I bent my knees. He said, bend some more. Or you can bend them more. You will find out if you're doing target practice that you're stepping first and then throwing your arm and missing rather than going arm first and then the feet follow. Okay? You'll be able to see those things because no matter how good an athlete you are, the picture you have in your mind of what you're doing and the actual picture in reality are rarely exactly the same. The more we practice, the closer they get as long as we're doing good mindful practice. And this is a great way to turn these classes into good, good practice. So recap, it's classroom, act like it. Make sure your area is clean, safe, quiet, and there's enough room for you. Set your video up so that you can see yourself and your, and your teacher can see yourself from the side. If they wanna see you from the front, they'll ask you to turn, that's really easy. And lastly, make sure that you know how to pin and unpin your video so that you can use your video monitor as a mirror and see what's going on. So that's it for today's session, really short. Those of you tuning in later today for Vince Target Practice, do this, get this set up this way. At other clubs, hey, use this to make more use of your classes too. Have a good time, everybody. We'll see you soon.